I welcome everybody here. Um, welcome pitchers and parents, hitters, get lost. Um, we've got a lot to cover, so let's get rolling on it. Um, make sure my slides will move. Here we go. So my name is Wayne Mazzoni. I'm currently the pitching coach at Sacred Heart University. Um, I'm also the founder of the D1 Pitching Academy website um, online, which is basically a, a remote way to coach people and develop pitchers, you know, from a distance. Um, the webinar has come together um, over my lifetime, um, but a lot of it's really designed to answer these two questions, questions I get from recruits, parents, dinner parties, relatives. Um, I get asked this, what are you looking for when you're recruiting pitchers? So what does a division one coach want when they recruit pitchers? And then number two, how can I as the pitcher or as the parent, how can my son develop like that? So this is really the basis of what this entire webinar is, is going to cover. What is a division one coach looking for and how can you become that? Um, and in preparing for this, I realized that, you know, you could see some gray here. I've been um, coaching nearly 30 years and I've seen, worked with, watched over 50,000 pitchers. And I like about 5% of them. It's just fact. Okay. Um, and when you start to look at it deeper, you realize that the 5%, there's a lot of commonalities between that 5% of what makes them the 5%. And then of course, how their recruiting process goes, we start to see this path, this roadmap. Um, and that's what this webinar is, is for me to give you the roadmap of the many before you that have gotten in that 5% and gone on to, to pitch in college. So what I'm really asking for is I appreciate your, your signing up and your being here and giving up some time on a Tuesday night. But I also see my college guys and my own kids. I know how like three screens means you're locked in. You got a TV, a tablet or a laptop and a phone. I want you to just lock in. If you're really serious about being a college pitcher, division one pitcher, I think your attention here is going to be highly rewarded. So let's lock in. Um, the, the purpose again is to hand you the roadmap of the 5%. What did this 5% do that got them signed to pitch in college and not end up like the 95% that don't play in college? Um, what I want to warn you here is, is what you will hear on this webinar is going to be different than maybe you've heard from friends, from your coaches, from parents, from teammates, all good people, all trying to help you. But I think it's a unique position I'm sitting in that I've been a college coach, division one coach, pitching coach for basically 30 years. So there's going to be things I'm going to be able to share with you that may be very different from what you've heard from, from other places. Um, one thing for sure is I know where you are. I understand what you're going through. The majority of people on this, you know, on your side of the screen are probably early high school, want to play in college, stressed out a little by the process about developing, about all that goes into being a baseball player. And I deal with people like you daily, uh, including this guy in the Rapsodo video, my knucklehead son right there. Um, so he's right down the hall. He wants to play college baseball. So I know firsthand what you, you know, what you guys go through. And what you do get is a lot of mixed messages, how to develop, how to the, handle the recruiting process, what's the right uh, strength training program, weighted balls, long toss, um, strength training, all these different things can be very confusing on the right path to improve. You definitely get stressed out every time you go on Instagram or, or um, Twitter and you see some kid, it seems like 10 year olds are committing to college, right? And you think you're pretty good and you're good enough, but yet you click online and someone else is committing that's not you, right? It gets very frustrating and frustrating to not be the six, five dude throwing 88 right out of the womb born that way. But as I tell the college guys, no one cares. No one cares that our field is not as nice as LSU's. They don't care when we show up. No one cares. Just work harder. Right. Um, and if you're having a hard time being sure how to develop on that side of the screen, you're not alone, but you definitely can join that elite group. You just need a proven plan to follow. Um, to know what we're up against here, to really, to really lock you in on what you're up against. I want to not sugarcoat it. 2.2% of high school players play in college. Half of those are pitchers. So basically 1.1% of high school aged kids, seniors going on to college, play at the division one level. And they're definitely doing things differently to get in that 1.1% than the rest are doing. Okay. And the fact of the matter is that I see kids all the time through video, through camps, through games, at facilities, and they look like D4 players. And there is no D4. And it makes me think, all right, if they're performing that way, they must therefore be training that way. Um, and 
you know, there's a lot I want to say about this next little bullet point, but in the last 10 years, there are more pitching coaches, there are more lessons than ever, there's more instruction in baseball, and yet it's still 95% of, of kids that I see pitching do not pass my Division One eyeballs, okay? So the fact of the matter is if there's about 100 of you on this webinar right now, five of you are, by my experience over my lifetime, moving in the, the right D1 direction, okay? Um, which is why we're here, which is why you tuned in and gave up a little bit of time on a Thursday night. Chad Knight, anyone that's local in Connecticut knows Chad Knight, uh, obviously had a shortened year at Duke, pitched uh, Westport Little League to the World Series and had a, you know, made a great name for himself. Um, and here's a perfect example of somebody that I worked with in this video in the middle is my first session with Chad when he was 11. And here's now Chad just before he went off to college and I just wanna play this briefly. Hi, I'm Chad Knight. I've been working with Coach Mazzoni for about six years now. Um, he's helped me tremendously develop as a pitcher ever since I've been about 11 years old. Uh, Wayne has a really, really unique way of communicating with each and every one of his players, addressing their problems um, to help them develop not only as just a pitcher, but as an overall baseball player. Um, Wayne's one of the best baseball people I know and I've ever met, and I owe a tremendous amount of my success to him. And that's very nice. You know, and I, even in prepping for this webinar, hearing that makes me feel good. Keep in mind, this dude had the work ethic, the love ethic of getting, getting really good at baseball and did exactly what I told him. There was no pushing to get him to do exactly what I told him. And he certainly had help in other areas, but whatever I said, he did. Um, another guy to look at, this is really cool, this video on the left will sort of play automatically. This is Brad Case, who I actually did a recruiting speech at his high school. Um, got hired by his high school to do a speech on the recruiting process. He heard me then. Because of that, he signed up for my camp many years ago now. He showed up. He looked like a fungal bat, like a pencil with a hat on, and he wasn't very good. He didn't really move well. Um, he didn't throw well. He had a disaster of, of a delivery and really, really terrible arm action, and he was intriguing, though, because he was tall and he was a good kid. Um, he basically became a student of mine, and Good things happened to him since that time. I just want to play a little bit of his clip here. Hey, Coach Mazzoni. Hope everything's going well. Um, so, in terms of your coaching, I want to start with how I met you. Uh, first off, I came to Iona Prep back when I was probably a sophomore in high school, and I was nervous to even try to come out for varsity because I was not a very good baseball player then. But the biggest thing you taught me during that speech was it's not whether we have that ability, it's whether we are willing to put in that time and effort to become the baseball player we want to become. And because of that, because of learning that lesson on that day, I've gotten myself to play in college baseball. I'm playing in, um, in the Sunshine State Conference in Florida against some of the greatest competition I've seen. And next time we're going to go on to play in Cape Cod. And a lot of that is because of those sessions I spent over in Connecticut with you, watching pro guys, perfect my motion, tweaking things here and there, and learning how to become a better baseball player. And I have you to thank for that 100%. Um, hope everything's well. Go Sacred Heart. <laughs> so Brad had a really good college career, really good summer ca uh, career, and then this happened um, two years ago, 17th round pick from a kid that in my memory showed up to my field as a 10th grader who looked like a newborn giraffe. Okay, so if you have the desire and you have the work ethic and you have a plan and structure, really good things can happen to you uh, along the way. So my goal again of this webinar is to let when you leave here, you'll definitely have a clearer picture of the roadmap to be in that 5% to develop and then of course make recruiting a lot easier. And I love this quote here. It says, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Sounds like a Yogi Berra quote, but it's, it's true. Um, I'm, in my mind, those of you watching on your side fit into this category. You have a goal of pitching in college, probably at the division one level. You're probably in that 12 to 18 age, but more than likely probably a ninth, 10th grader, maybe 11th grader. Um, I don't really care where your current level of development is. You might feel you're miles away from pitching in college and you might feel you're a little two tweaks away from being at that level. It doesn't matter. This presentation is gonna work for you regardless. The fact of the matter is you have a dream of the biggest dream in your life right now, besides having a healthy family, is to pitch in college, sign a letter of intent and reach that lifelong dream. So if that's the place you're in, in terms of being a pitcher, you're in the right spot. One of the things I want to guard against is the fact that 
you on that side basically feel like you're pretty much doing everything you need to do right now. You're doing it already. You're, you're doing exactly what it's going to take to pitch in college. All you really need to do is have the right coaches see you. Gee, if it wasn't for the coronavirus, I'd be at Vandy. Um, I'm doing everything that I need to do. I don't really need to change anything. And I'm asking you to be open-minded to it because that's what the 95% said before they went on to play club ball or intramural baseball in college and not NCAA baseball. So unless your mailbox is, is flowing with letters and offers and different things, I ask you to be open-minded. As it says, I've got it all figured out, said no successful person ever. Um, what I'm going to teach you in this next hour is what I've learned over my 28 years of coaching. It's learned from evaluating, recruiting, coaching thousands of pitchers. This roadmap has become basically my lifetime's worth of work, and it's what I use to help pitchers at all levels, college, youth, guys, anything. It structures your development and recruiting, um, and your goal of being – getting to that level of pitching in college will be a lot closer at the end of this webinar. Um, some of you know me, for those that don't, who in the heck is this dude, Coach Mez, where you found something online or somehow you got on a list and boom, you're here now, who is this dude? Um, I've been coaching since 1992. I'm at Sacred Heart, I'm in my 14th year. We've had a lot of success uh, during the last uh, stretch of time, probably 10, 12 years, we've been to 10 conference championships, three regionals, and I've been a, fortunate enough to coach hundreds of guys that have gone on to make it to the minor leagues and to the major leagues. Um, outside of Sacred Heart, I've worked with thousands of pitchers, uh, individually, privately, clinics, velocity camps, you name it. Many pitchers that when I started with like Chad Knight, you know, I was hoping maybe I can recruit Chad Knight. And then Chad Knight got way above my level. So did Chris Reed, who went to Stanford. So did Brad Case, who went to Rollins. So did Alex Freina, who went to Lafayette. So did Hira Wyatt, who's up here, you'll meet in a minute, who was going to Duke. Um, so I worked with a lot of people outside of my college program. I've also become an author on recruiting and pitching, and I've been a clinician and a writer at many of the major publications, major coaching clinics, because of the success that I've had with my, my pitchers. Um, so, um, which I think is a pretty good career that I've had for this mediocre late 80s tweener wearing Greg Maddox looking pants of a D3 guy that went to Gettysburg College. Um, however, to throw myself down here a little bit, I stunk as a coach in the beginning of my career. When you get hired as a coach, it, no one checks your knowledge. No one on ramps you into coaching. I wasn't a major recruit. I only had one pitching coach in my entire life, my college pitching coach. And at the beginning of my career, not knowing any better, I, I was frustrating not to help every pitcher. I could help some, not all. Recruiting was stand there, point a radar gun, look at it, see if I like the person. I didn't know any better in the beginning part of my career. So I like this quote. Also, people would do better if they knew better, right? So I actually, after four or five years of coaching, used my brain and did this. I asked for help. I started tapping into college coaches, high-level coaches, pro coaches, and I created Wayne Mazzoni's little mastermind network. I started studying how these guys recruit, how they teach pitching. And I started learning from guys that had tremendous experience and were at where I wanted to get to. And by interviewing all these guys and starting to see some of the commonalities and different things is where my roadmap ultimately was, was, was founded. This roadmap is not a done deal. It's constantly updated. It's definitely changed my coaching life, more importantly, the life of my pitchers. It is what I want to share with you. And without a plan, you're just hoping, right? So hope without a plan is just a dream, right? You wanna actually have a, a, a plan and structure in place for your development. Um, I think it's hard being a kid your age this day, these day and ages, uh, especially as a pitcher, because many pitchers struggle because they get just a little bit of information from this dude online, from this guy on Twitter, from this coach here, from that coach, just enough information to kind of help you, but keep you in the dark and not know the exact path. A lot of what you're getting is not structured or tested or proven, and it's one person's theory. So maybe your coach played in double A, but he doesn't have a breadth of experience, and he's teaching you just in his experience. Well, maybe in six years, he's going to change everything. But right now, you're in his theory, okay? You're getting that one person's theory. It's not studied in a big picture. Um, I'm not the best pitching coach who ever lived. There's many good pitching coaches, but I can tell you now, I don't know if you'll find a better experienced pitching coach who's going to do a webinar, who's going to share it with the public. I don't see, you know, Brent Strom from the Astros or whatever doing webinars unless I'm, unless I'm missing them. So I think you could keep going as you've been going, figure it out, 
or you can follow a, a proven plan, which is what I want to cover. So I want to get to the to the really good stuff of this. Um, I love this little clip here. And hitters, really, just get out. Go do whatever it is that you do. We're talking with the most important part of the team here, pitchers. So the roadmap must do is, is three things. Number one, you must know what the 5% have that the 95% don't. So that's one, and we're going to get started with that one first. But to give you a preview, number two is, how do you get what the 5% have? First, we have to know what they have, and then how do I develop to be able to get that? And then thirdly, once I'm actually a pretty talented pitcher, what is it from an insider view, from a college coach's view, what can I learn from a coach that's going to make the recruiting process a whole lot easier than it is? Because the fact of the matter is, it kind of stinks. And it's only gotten harder now with, with COVID-19. Okay, so let's get into the good stuff right here. The first must do number one in this roadmap is know what these 5% have. Um, and it starts with this. I've been at Sacred Heart since 2006. We are good. We are not Wake, LSU, Hawaii, NC State, UNLV, TCU, Tulane. Look at all these, these programs. We don't get the same recruits, but we play every one of these teams. So I'm not getting the same level athlete, same level pitcher, but I have to develop this guy to be able to play these guys and then get to a, a regional and beat these guys. And we've been able to beat these guys. I mean, that Sacred Heart could beat Mississippi State. That Sacred Heart can take a series from Tulane with the weather, with all these different factors. We must be doing something right, okay? And that something right comes from this, this regional roadmap program that I've created. How do we get it to a regional? That's our goal in college baseball. How do we get to a regional? So when I'm recruiting pitchers, I'm looking for qualities, okay, that they either have or that I can help them develop once they're in the program, okay? And we're gonna go through those now. The, the D1 roadmap is the same version of this, what I use for my pitching students. Almost identical with the exception of it has some recruiting things and things are scaled back slightly because it's a different world when you're 15 than when you're 20, okay? Um, so the key is when we are recruiting, when I'm recruiting, when college coaches are recruiting, it's kind of these boxes that you're checking, okay? Recruits must possess certain traits and check boxes for us to be interested in. If you check all the boxes we're about to go over, you go to Vandy, dude, you go to Clemson, you go to one of the big things. I, I said before, I worked with pitchers that have developed so much, they got out of my, my level of recruiting, okay? So your goal is to check the boxes we're about to go over. If you check no boxes or very little boxes, then you don't play in college, which is what 92% of high school pitchers play in Shamiro's club sports, they don't play in college. The more boxes you're able to check, the higher level you're able to go, okay? And this is from the draft that happened, what, about three weeks ago now. Two things I just filmed with my phone off the TV because I thought they were really interesting. I didn't make this presentation, and then, you know, off of these clips, they backed up my presentation. So listen to both. And his delivery will be described as clean as a whistle. He's got potentially three plus pitches. He's up to 99. He's got a near ideal frame. I mean, this guy checks all the boxes, and the Nationals are known for going for upside potential problems. Here's another one. Same night. Talk about all those different things. I heard from someone in the Rays organization, and I said to him, why Bitsko? And he said he checks off all the boxes. And in this case, all the boxes are that huge fastball. Right. So what are these boxes? All right. If you're taking some notes, this is a good spot to take the notes. There's six boxes. Okay, the boxes are number one, does this guy pitch on offense? Does he already do it or can we develop this in him? An aggressive approach to pitching. Does he pitch like he is on offense because he has the ball? And this affects all our coaching language, our mental training, our bullpen sessions, how we grade the pitchers that we work with. Um, number one is, does this guy pitch on offense with whatever stuff that he has? That's number one crucial thing that we're looking for. Number two, does he have or can he develop the pitcher's body and the delivery that has five key moves that allows him to pitch to his potential? So in a study that I've done and I, other people have backed it up, all big leaguers, all top level throwers, all make five key moves in their delivery, even while keeping their own style that they either have to do when we're recruiting them or we, they need to be able to do it. And then in terms of their body, are they explosive? Are they mobile? Are they flexible? Are they single leg strong in a way that translates into their delivery? I've had dudes that could squat 550 and, and I've seen them top at 82. So 
they're strong and then there's pitching strong and especially in the way we move in our delivery. So does this recruit have the body and the delivery that's going to keep, you know, him with a, a, being able to check the boxes. Number three, box three, does he have, or can he develop really elite fastball? So we're talking velocity, two seam, four seam, BP fastball, which just takes something off it. Does he have spin? Does the ball move? Can he command it? Right. Early in my career, I just thought, you know, 85. All right. That's every dude throwing 85 is the same. No, four guys can throw 85. One is way better than the other three because he does things with his fastball, which is basically always going to be the key pitch that we're, we're looking at. So does this pitcher or do you on that side, do you have a really good fastball or are you really on your way to developing that fastball? Number four. Does the pitcher have or can he develop an arsenal of pitches that work to his strength and his, and his style? So based on his arm slot and his fastball and his movement, he needs to build a, uh, his repertoire. And at the college level, we use a pitch building system where we discover which pitches should be kept and developed and which pitches should be removed. Okay, that's absolutely crucial. If you just want to throw a breaking ball that some dude does on TV, but it doesn't play to your style and you're telegraphing it and you don't have command of it, that's not what works for you, okay? You need three quality pitches to pitch really, really good. And so I'd rather see you have three complementary quality pitches than six that you just have a low level of command and are, are effective. Box number five, does the pitcher have or can he develop the abil ability to pitch as well with runners on as when no one is on? Because a lot of times I'll see a dude throw a bullpen. I like him. I go watch him in a game. He's carving. Now a base runner gets on, walk, hit, error, and all of a sudden now this dude falls apart. So it's a big separator when I'm recruiting. Is this guy able to pitch just as well when runners are on? Can he manage the running game and still keep his velocity and command in all his pitches? And if he's not able to do that, is he open to a specific system that I've developed, righty or lefty, that I need to know in the recruiting process? Dude, this is how we do it here. Will you do this? If not, there's other schools. OK, but it works and it's worked for years. So I need to know that they either can do it now or they're open to doing it. Box number six, does the pitcher have or can he develop the ability to pitch under extreme pressure? I should put the word extreme pressure in there. Can he pitch at LSU with 10,000 people? Can he pitch at Louisiana Lafayette, where when we show up two hours before the game at Louisiana Lafayette, it seems the entire place is drunk. They start drinking, you know, you call them darties, you young kids. They, they're, they're drinking the night before. It's chaos. They abuse the coaches. They abuse everybody, right? You can't pitch under pressure there. How are you going to be able to pitch in a regional and, and, you know, Omaha if we get there, right? So does the pitcher have that skill or can they build it by buying into our mental and bullpen training peak performance system, okay? So those are boxes and every coach kind of has boxes and maybe they're formal or not so formal. But I have a formal box system and, and it's, you know, it's really a, a good basis of how I recruit. This is something that a, a scout friend basically sent to me. This is something that they use in terms of box checking for pitchers and different things that they're looking for from all the pitchers traits. Um, again, anyone local to Connecticut probably knows this name, Hero Wyatt. Here's my first session with Hero. On the upper left, I could swear I would see him at that age and not think he was going to be a Duke commit class of 2023. He did reclassify. Um, but he started checking the body box. He started checking the mental box. He started checking the velocity box, the delivery box, um, the command box, and basically got himself to become an elite pitcher. And here's a little bit of video of just some quick clips of you could start to see this kid at his age has got some velo, some movement, some legit stuff and is on his way to Duke. Okay, so Hero is a, a guy that bought into everything, grew, and developed. Um, here's something that a university, a Stanford University uses. It's called Sports Board. Um, and I know because I've been to Stanford, unbelievable campus, great camp that they run. And they, they use this tracking system with an iPad. And the coach, had, they have a, all, this big camp. And the coach has these boxes for pic pictures and he literally touches the screen and right off a few box ch boxes checked, he knows which guys are the guys he wants to recruit. So literally checking boxes because it's too much with a pen and paper with the amount of kids they have. They preload the kids that are coming into the camp and then the pitchers when they're up, they check the boxes and that's how they know who they want to recruit when the camp is done. Okay. 
James Cooksey is a guy that played for me. Great story. Came in as a recruited walk-on and redshirted his freshman year, meaning he didn't get any money. He didn't even play his first year. He just was a redshirt, okay? And then after that year, we basically said to him, listen, uh, you know, we've, we've seen you in the fall and the spring in terms of practices. You're going to struggle to make the team in the future. And, you know, he wanted to get very detailed on why we weren't that high on him, right? And we basically said, listen, your body type, your arm slot, all these things, you're not going to be a 90s guy, right? You're going to be a low 80s guy. You need to have unbelievable command. So we basically set up a structure for him to develop his command, and he became obsessed on it. And just so you know, I've set up the same system with other guys who didn't become obsessed on it and then had an okay career. Cooksey, after his junior year, turns in to have the fourth best ERA in the United States in Division I, and he didn't throw a pitch over 82.5 miles per hour and started our regional at TCU. How did he do it? He became elite in that command box. He was able to throw any pitch at any time to any place. And to know that it is more than velocity, I'm going to play this clip here of a Zoom that I did uh, with Eric Cressy. Eric Cressy, pretty famous in the baseball world, strength and conditioning coach, and is also now the Yankee strength and conditioning coach, talking about how velocity is not everything. I think you'll find this interesting. Anything else you want to impart? Otherwise, I, I think we covered a lot, so I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. No, I mean, that's good. I think the only thing I would tell those guys is just that nobody realizes how many really good players are out there, you know, and I, I, I don't think I ever realized it when I first got into this, you know, and, you know, back in 2007, if you were an 88 to 90 right-handed pitcher, like you were the bee's knees, you were a top five draft pick. And nowadays, like, even as a left, like we had, we had three or four like mid nineties lefties in our free agent class that couldn't get signed about a year ago. It was, it blew my mind. So if there's one thing I would tell those younger guys is like, get out of your comfort zone. You know, every guy that I see in pro ball is the best player in the history of their town. And then, you know, you go to pro ball and all of a sudden you don't realize that, you know, there's, there's dozens of guys coming from the Dominican Republic. There's guys coming from Mexico. There's guys coming from Venezuela and Puerto Rico. And like, okay, so the reason I played that clip is everybody wants Velo. We all want Velo. I want to see Velo. I, my pitchers want Velo. My son wants Velo. You want Velo. But what he's saying is he's got guys lefties throwing in the mid 90s that can't get work with a major league team. So it's more than velocity. Um, so I want to kind of dive into a little bit here just on one of these boxes. Some of you that know me will probably understand this style, but I think this screen right here that I'm going to go over is worth the exact time on, on the webinar, okay? And too many guys cross-pollinate what I'm about to go over, and it's why they never really pitch and develop to their full potential. There should be three phases of your active pitching. The first is when you are working on your delivery. The focus is just your body, not the ball. The ball gets thrown into a screen or into a net, or with a towel so that the focus is just on the way that you're moving. At our college uh, in practice, we have certain time of practice and a certain place on the field where it's construction zone time. It's work on the delivery. How are we moving? We're going to look at some video. It becomes an obsession on how's the body moving, which differentiates from this. Command mode. Command mode, the focus is the ball making the ball repeatedly do what you want. It is impossible to think about your front side and get a slider to break at the same time, okay? You can't do both at the same time. When you're in a bullpen, the, the focus of the bullpen is to get the ball to do what you want it to do repeatedly. If you want to think about something mechanical, step off the mound, think about that thing. You can even bend or do what you need to do to remind yourself. Step back on, lock into the target, and attack the target. And that should also be different than game mode. In game mode, you should be on offensive attack mode. Attack the hitter and win each battle. That is the only job. It's not about just throwing a strike. It's not about my mechanics. It's not about hitting spots. It's about winning the battle, winning the game, getting outs. And when you're on the mound thinking about only locating the ball or only what your body is doing, you're in trouble. Your focus should simply be on beating the hitter and winning that battle. Okay, so please, if you're taking some notes, write that down. Here's what Pedro said. Pitchers are supposed to attack hitters. Pitching is not defense. Pitching is offense. Pretty good for a 5'11", 175-pound guy that's in the Hall of Fame. Okay, Cody Kersky is a Sacred Heart guy that we recruited because he had velocity. Okay, he had velocity at high school, but yet here is his freshman year numbers, a 5-plus ERA, 
losing record, more hits than innings pitch, and equal walks to strikeouts for our top recruit who got tuition in terms of how much money we gave him, okay? So what we really needed to do with him is through an assessment form and through watching his style of pitching, we basically came up with he's just not aggressive enough. He's trying to throw each pitch perfectly. He's afraid of giving up hits, afraid of giving up two strike hits. We had to change everything that we did with him, and he went on to have this in his junior year as the, basically the same guy just by changing his mindset. Half the ERA, 7-3 and three record, uh, 12 less or 13 less hits than innings pitch, but look at the walks to strikeouts. It's a six to one ratio walk to strikeouts. You know what happens when you have a six to one walk to strikeout ratio? That happens. You become a high draft pick and you get money to do it. And he wasn't on that track, but you know, I had to learn him and I had to figure out what it was that he wasn't doing because scouts have the same boxes that, that college coaches have. So to recap what we just covered in that one thing, to be good now, tomorrow, this weekend, to develop for the future and to get recruited, you got to develop in all the areas that we talked about, okay? You have to be constantly developing. But what I want to transition to is now that we know what, what is a coach looking for, how do you get these things that the coach is looking for? So this is where you guys struggle. How to get what those 5% have. Um, I love this little slide right here. I hope I can make it come across like I want to. Getting what you want in life is painfully simple. Painfully simple, right? You want to get in better shape? The world knows what to do. Work out more, eat better, right? But simple is not easy. So you need to know where you are now as the pitcher, where you want to go, and then what is the most efficient, proper, quickest path to get there. And this pyramid thing is here to remind me on a podcast I heard recently, and I'm going to quicken it because it's, you know, I don't want to kill too much time with it. Two people were charged with back in the Egyptian times to build the pyramid. If they completed a pyramid, they would be anointed kings and have all the riches and spoils that a king would get. So each guy went about it very different way. The first guy just got right to it, man. He started clearing the ground. He started moving stones. He was grunting and driving and moving and doing everything he had to do. And like two years into it, he had about three levels, but he was starting to have a problem where to go up higher levels, he had to get stronger. So he just kept focused on how do I get stronger to get these, these boulders up on top of this level. It was going to be 12 levels at the end. By two years, he had three levels done. The other guy had done nothing. So this one guy goes and visits the other guy and he sees him in his place and he's developing this machine. And he's like, dude, what are you doing with a machine that we, we were told to become Kings and, and you're screwing around with the machine. Okay. By year five, the guy who started right away with the grunt work was at about level six. Okay. And the guy who started with the machine was completed. He used the machine. He figured out how to way to move the, the boulders into position with the machine, completed it. He started later, but completed it quicker. At 26, became a king, retired, never worked again. The other guy died at level nine from a heart attack by what it took to, and never became a king and never was able to enjoy the spoils and the things that came with it. Why am I telling you that? Let's work smart, dude. Let's work smart, not just always harder. Okay, so I learned this myself last year turning 50. I decided to do an Ironman. The problem was I couldn't really swim. I mean, I wouldn't drown to the ground, but I didn't, was not a swimmer. What did I do? I found a coach that has trained people. I got a plan how to go from not being able to swim, swim to being able to swim for the Ironman. And it became the most satisfying thing that I've done in my adult life. And here's me swimming, biking, and running. And here's my time in the Ironman with a plan. It took a plan. I didn't need a plan on how to run. I didn't need a plan on how to bike. I needed a plan on how to swim because it was not my area of expertise. So these six boxes I talked about in the first must do fall under this, your body, your skill, your mind. That makes up 100% of who you are as, a, as an athlete, baseball player, and pitcher. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about how that translates. So for box number one, to pitch aggressively and to pitch on offense, from a body standpoint, the intent of each pitch in a game, the intent of a bullpen pitch affects the way your body moves. You want to throw harder and pitch more aggressively? It starts with your thoughts, your intent. Mike Tyson had an intent to knock people through the ropes. It worked most of the time. Max Scherzer has an intent to dominate you at the plate. It works most of the time. And it changes the way the body moves. And your off-field workouts 
and the way you go about it, your intensity directly translates to your on mound in-game pitching performance. From a skill standpoint, your bullpens must be based around pitching aggressively and pitching on offense. And your delivery must produce elite command. If you have all these things, but your delivery has you all over the place, how can you pitch aggressively if you're always behind in the count? You can't. And no one wants to play behind you. No one wants to recruit you. No one wants to watch you. And then from a mental standpoint, are you doing mental training? Do you have a mantra, which we'll, you'll see later? Do you have the right approach to pitching on offense? Are you understanding how to compete in practice and in everything that you do that will translate to you being a guy that will just, no matter what the circumstances are, compete on the mound? So here's Bartolo. Everybody loves Bartolo. The most important thing when you enter the game is to attack hitters. When you get behind hitters, that's when you get scared and they get hits off you. Okay. Box number two, how do you develop and train the body with the key moves? You need to have an elite warm up, guys. You need to have an arm care system. You need to take care of the body. If you've ever been hurt, it's no fun. You need to do prehab work and rehab work. You know how to do massage and mobility and flexibility, strength and conditioning. Are you lifting like a guy who wants to look good on the beach or to play left tackle? Or are you lifting like an elite baseball pitcher? Okay. Number two, do you understand what the five key moves that all pitchers have that must be in your delivery? Because if not, your future in baseball is capped. Okay. You might be sitting on the side pumping 88 to 90, and that's fantastic. You're going to probably play in college, Division One, probably get scholarship money for it. But you know, you're going to be a, are you going to go to the, to the big leagues unless you, you know, get to your top potential with the way you move? You're not. Um, and then, are you training your body? and training your mind to, to focus specifically on winning the battle at the plate, or are you distracted? Um, and this matters tremendously on, in terms of your delivery. Your delivery in a game will manifest what your, your thoughts are. So are you aware of those thoughts and are you training those thoughts? Tom Seaver, any Mets guys out there, pitching for me is the greatest combination of physical and mental skills. Amen, Hall of Famer, okay? Box three, about the fastball velocity type. Do you have a throwing program? A 365-day year-long throwing program. If you don't, you should have one. Do you understand what a weighted ball program is? Not just the cookie-cutter driveline thing or something you've heard. Do you have one that's specific to you and your body type and your age and the way that you move? It's crucial. Do you understand how to develop and experiment with different fastballs and grips and to train spin and to train movement and to train command? of a fastball, right? And back to the mind. How does the mind play parts? You need to throw inside. What do you do when you face elite hitters? Do you understand how to pitch off your fastball? Do you have trust in your pitches? Okay, so there's nothing in here that doesn't, that doesn't fall under how your body, your skill, and your mind work, okay? Um, great quote right here from, from Kyle Hendricks, right? Not a crazy hard thrower. Basically talks about right here in the middle. And you can simplify your thought and commit to just one pitch. He's not thinking about his next contract, his mom in the stands, the game being on TV. He's thinking about that pitch. He's committed to that particular pitch, okay? Box number four, developing your arsenal. Are you developing your finger, hand, forearm, and wrist strength? A lot of these pitches, the ability to throw them are basically elbow to fingertip strength. Yeah, you could bench press a building, but are your fingers and your wrist and your forearm and your elbow strong? And not to mention your hamstring, groin, and lower back affects your secondary pitches. If you can't bend and reach and have good extension, you can't throw a quality nasty changeup, okay? Um, are you understanding how to develop your secondary pitches and have a different curveball and slider than a cutter? Do you understand how to develop your changeup different grips and types? Are you upgrading your bullpen? Pitching's the worst practice thing I've ever seen. Honestly, I can't, I, I can't stand watching the way it's practiced sometimes. That bullpen, man, is your go time. You got one a week, probably. You got to know how to do it so that you're the best pitcher that you possibly can have. And then you should also be progressing some basic things and moving up levels every time you progress. Shouldn't just be the same bullpen. Um, and then again, back to, do you have an any pitch at any time mentality? How do you handle big spot? you know, pitching in a, a big spot in the game. Do you understand how to use a hitter's aggressiveness against him and be able to get him out, right? First and second, you come out of the pen, one out, you got a two and O oh count. You know what? I want you to go, I got this dude right where I want. Here comes change up. Here's my ground ball to short. At the college level, ground ball to short, six, four, three are out of the inning, okay? Mariana, right in the middle. 
He says, it's because it takes a ton of concentration and self-belief to stay in the moment in this way and not let the highs and lows mess with your psyche. The greatest of all time closer right there, throwing basically one elite pitch that was able to stay in the moment. So you're going to hear that a lot. In terms of how do you develop to be able to pitch to deal with the running game, hand-eye coordination is not just for hitters. Hand-eye coordination is crucial to be able to manage different runners at different bases and still be able to be an elite strike thrower or glove hitter, okay? I should, shouldn't say strike thrower, glove hitter. So a lot of times we don't want to throw a strike. Single leg strength. Do you have single leg strength so you can be quick to the plate but still drive with the backside leg that you could, if you throw 85 with no one around in a bullpen, that you throw 85 with the bases loaded or second and third or first and third, okay? Do you understand how to practice mixing looks do you have a proper delivery in the stretch? Do you know how to have an elite pickoff move to shut down the, the running game? Um, and then from a mental standpoint, do you know how to focus 100% on the runner at second or the guy at the plate? Do you train the running game in practice? It's a big undercoached thing. You're in the winter inside throwing pens. You're throwing pens. In a, and then you get into a game and you're not used to the runners at first and third because you haven't practiced it. And even if you're throwing your own bullpens on your own, there's a way to practice it without having runners actually there. But that's crucial. We need you to be great at the biggest times in the game, and that's when runners are on. Love this quote from my favorite, Greg Maddox. There's always stuff to learn. There's stuff I uh, didn't hear until I was 40. I wish I heard when I was 20. The stuff I hear now that I've never heard before, right? If this dude, the greatest I think of all time, we could debate that some other time, is always able to learn, right, than the rest of us can. And then the last thing, how do we develop the ability to pitch under pressure? A lot of it comes from the breath. The breath is the link between the mind and the body. It can be trained, it can be practiced. Are you able to control your heart rate and respiratory rate? Not if you're not practiced, right? You come in and out of LSU you know, with a big spot and you're not ready to understand how to handle that situation, you're gonna hyperventilate, okay? Um, do your bullpens reflect, reflect this pressure? Do you understand how to have outcome bullpens and com competitive bullpens that aren't just, hey, I threw bad pitches, who cares? Let me throw another one, right? And then visualization. Do you understand how to use mastery and adversity, overcoming adversity and routines to be able to develop, okay? To be able to pitch under pressure, you need to get into that spot at a big game at, at whatever level, give up back-to-back -back doubles, okay? And go, you know what? It's time to bear down and start carving people as opposed to going, oh man, today's not my day. This team's too good. And you don't have a plan for adversity. OK, so Corey Kluber, Mickey Calloway, his old pitching coach, just talks about his routine His everything pitch, pitch by pitch routine. He's just consistent. He resets everything. He's locked in. That's why Clayton Kershaw lifts his arms above his head, because he takes a deep breath. Garrett Cole wipes the rubber clean every single time as a routine, as a pitch by pitch routine to clear the slate off. OK, so some of these next slides here. They're going to kind of throw a lot of stuff at you, but these are the things that I'm working with guys that are my regular college guys or whether they're guys that I work with, you know, remotely on a regular basis is structure, right? We're structuring out their week-long, year-long throwing, okay? We're giving, uh, managing workload. Your workload is crucial as a pitcher, and it's not just how many game pitches you threw. Your workload is what team defense you did, what pickoffs you did, what long toss, what weighted balls. You need to know how to keep your arm healthy and peak for competition. It's not just hoping you feel good and, and going, you know, overhead and pulling your elbow and thinking you're ready for a game, right? So there's a variety of things for bullpen systems. Do you understand how to chart yourself in a bullpen? Do you know how to do a scripted bullpen? This one here on the top right is a competitive bullpen. This right here is the, uh, we call it the, the Pio bullpen. It's our guys basically compete with this bullpen almost every single time as a way to talk crap to each other, the way to see how far they've developed. It's like playing golf. How low of a score can you get each time? Um, there's some information about counts, and we always post that in the bullpen, and guys need to understand what crucial counts are. Um, the next slide that's uh, coming up is something really cool, okay? So with the body, are you on a structured development program? But this is my favorite thing to play. This is Jake Arrieta with Jess Mendoza, and I just want to show you a little bit of this here. Directly correlate to my ability to go out in the field and repeat my delivery. How much is this? Oh my God! What do I do it for this other one? Yeah. Hey. Okay. Hey, so basically, it's trying to keep your hips square, shoulders hanging hey. down and back, and trying, and trying to get as much length as you can. Do you, do you, can I, we just have a moment? 
minute right now to see if this is a pitcher in Major League Baseball right now that is able to do splits on a machine with resistance. That's Jake Arietta, who looks like an NFL tight end that can do splits and a Pilates reformer, okay? Some of you, maybe your mom's listening. She probably knows what a Pilates reformer is. Um, it's an unbelievable way to develop. Yoga is an unbelievable way to develop. But do you know how to develop your body in a year-round fashion to keep you healthy and operating at peak performance, okay? Um, mental part, right? This quote here is just basically Scherzer saying he outworks people. So when he gets on the mound, he has a mental advantage because no one's ever outworked him. Okay. And this is a clip. I had to cross out some of the stuff that this was on, um, you know, this was on Twitter about him going crazy cursing at a hitter because he's just fired up, right? That's his mental piece. But I have all my pitchers do this with their hat. They write underneath their hat, a little motivational stuff. I kind of put the black things on the screen so you wouldn't see it in case, you know, we got young kids, there's some curses there. But what are you doing in your mental aspect? How are you improving your command? These, these target pads are something that are always in our bullpens and our guys know how to use them in terms of developing elite command or even developing pitches. Um, these basic balls will help you with command and movement patterns. These are ones, if you haven't seen them, called Clean Fuego, which are spin efficiency trainers that are tremendous and could change a career. Do you know how to use them? Do you know what they are? Um, and then, obviously, delivery and video analysis type things. You, are you being coached? Are you coaching yourself by knowing what to be able to look for to develop? So I'm just going to play a, a quick you know, 45 second video of just various clips of, of some video analysis that I've done with a variety of people, you know, over the last year or two. Through here, right? You can actually see this view inside. Do you see how his arms coming and sort of in front of it? And at that stage, your chest should be closed. So your chest should be facing. Well, because of that, let me go back to Bumgarner here. When you see Bumgarner come through at release, he's got the front knee is coming back towards the body for good post up and extension. And here, right about at release with the shoulder. And then what it looks like it's leading. Take your hands apart. You're okay in that position there. But then now you come way flying off that. Um, so again, at foot strike, look where your hand is here. And I'm talking about your arm at 90-90 right here. Whereas at foot strike for you, your arm is yet to get into that full position. And that's the force of his lower pulling the upper body through is what creates that whip. When you're landing, your arm is already up in the on the target, this back knee is kind of bent in that same way that Verlander's is in ground going forward. So if I just clear all that off, you can just see this position here where, look at this also, you kind of get your elbow here above your shoulder. So you're releasing the ball without your full body behind it. Um, and that Okay, so now make sure I'm on the right screen. Good, so de your development, has a lot of pieces to it. But one of the things it starts with is with an elite assessment, okay? To really truly know where you are right now in terms of your body, your skill, your mind. When you actually do a legitimate assessment, which is what I do with my college guys after every fall and after every spring, it gives them an idea of where they are and what gets the most focus. Is it something on the body? Is it something in pitch development? Is it something mental? And to really, to, the, to get better, you obviously need to keep doing what you're good at, but you need to start improving what you're bad at. And you start upgrading those things, you start getting yourself better. Alex Farina is a great, perfect story. Um, ridiculously good kid, right? Really good kid, great body, great work ethic, mindset, 92 velocity, ridiculous slider was getting ripped in college. Look at his freshman year with an 8-3-1 and 1-7 and record and his uh, sophomore year, 6.46 ERA with a one and two record, okay? And I did an assessment with him and found out that basically he did not trust his two-seam fastball. It, it, it moved so much he didn't feel comfortable with it, which was music to my ears. I know how to train elite movement. I gave him a flight path system, exactly told him what I wanted him to do, and it became his go-to pitch. In his junior year, he pitched to a 3.89 ERA, two and two record, Completely different walks to strikeouts, eight walks, 31 strikeouts, 
Um, and then here's what happened. Alex Farina gets drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers, gets off the plane, signs right there, and says he couldn't do without me. Um, now, I hope it doesn't come across when I'm showing these things that, like, I think I'm the world's greatest. But you know what? I could have been a stockbroker. I could have been a business owner. And I'm a coach. And that's the reward that I get right there, is helping people turn the corner and get their dreams to come true. Um, my good friend Paul Maneri, who's the coach at LSU, has endorsed uh, everything that I've done. And to get a, uh, um, an endorsement out of this guy is not easy. So I'm very proud of that. And I also want you to hear a little bit about one of my uh, former pitchers at Sacred Heart, Troy Scribner. My name is Troy Scribner. I am currently a pitcher for the Los Angeles Angels organization at the AAA level. I played under Coach Maz for four years at Sacred Heart University, where he was my pitching coach. And um, I owe a lot of my success in my career to um, Coach Maz and his willingness to keep an open mind towards the game of baseball and to always be able to welcome in new methods and new theories to apply to his players. Um, not only for the physical delivery part of the game, but the mental approach to the game as well. And a lot of his coaching methods are methods that coaches that I currently have at the minor league level have not discovered or are s slow to discover. And um, for that reason, I've always had kind of a leg up on everybody around me. So I owe a lot of that to him. And um, I'm very grateful to have played under him for four years. And the reason I played that for you is this is probably the proudest I've ever been as a coach. There's our first ever big leaguer right there. Troy Scribner called up two years ago with the Angels. Okay. Um, so to recap this second must do, you, you must have a development plan. A really structured, you can't, it doesn't mean you can't have fun, can't see your friends, can't sleep in every once in a while, but you need to have a development plan if you're serious about being it. If, you're, if, you, if I asked you here on a one to 10 scale, how much you want to play college baseball? If your answer is not a 10, it's not going to work. So tens only, basically, right? But your development plan can't just be an hour or less than a week. If that's all it is, forget about it, right? It's just life doesn't go that way. So we're going to transition a little bit to the to the next thing. But I want to start off by saying you need to be good to get recruited. Okay, I've seen so many people spend money, time, effort trying to get exposure, go to a million camps when they're just not good enough. They could be on ESPN all day long. And it, it wouldn't matter. So the first thing is you need the talent, but then you, you definitely need to understand how coaches recruit. And that transitions us to this third thing. What are the inside things that coaches are doing in the way that we recruit that could make recruiting a breeze for you, okay? So what the average pitcher does, what the 95% pitcher does, is take lessons, they get on a travel team, they go to a couple of tournaments and showcases, and they think all I need to do is just get seen. It's, you know, if I'm not getting recruited now, it's coronavirus, um, that's all it is. Just need to get seen and I'll be good. The average pitcher doesn't play in college. Well, then they'll say, well, maybe I'll throw in a recruiting service or a profile and, and that'll do it. I'll get sports recruits or NCSA or whatever. Um, think again, because that's what 95% are doing that did not get to that next level. And for a second, and I hope you're locked in with me. Put on your coaching hat for a second. Recruiting for us stinks. It's awful. It's overwhelming. There's so many kids. It's so confusing. There's so many teams, players, tournaments. We have limited time. It's overwhelming. I get 50 emails a day. There's all kinds of tournaments, links, streaming things. It's, it's incredibly difficult. Okay. And you are relying on only information from friends and family and some coaches and that. And those aren't the people that actually are recruiting, okay? And there's a gap between what we know as coaches and what you are hearing on your side. And that's why I wrote a book on the topic and why I've done over a thousand speeches at high schools on the recruiting process, okay? My baseball recruiting book was researched through over 150 college coaches. So I would not just pre be presenting the Wayne Mazzoni way of you know, teaching recruiting process. And it also made me a better recruiter by learning from other people, and it made me an expert in the recruiting process. And I've done, as I said, thousands of live and in-person seminars, and then recently been doing many, many webinars on the recruiting process. Um, Dean Stotts, former associate head coach at Stanford, when I went out to Stanford about 15 years ago, and he said to the whole group of kids, I, you know, there's nothing that really can help you in the recruiting process other than this, you know, being good. And I sent them all my information and I got an endorsement out of them. that basically the book, video, PowerPoint, everything that I had was a really huge way to help people be 
navigate this confusing recruiting process. Here is a clip. I'm just going to play a short amount of it of just some TV uh, coverage that I got for the recruiting process. Their child's ticket to a college scholarship. My son's applying for a bunch of volleyball schools in Southern California. Okay. The number of kids getting a full ride to college is way under 1%. A very rare kid gets a full ride. So raise your hand if you are the athlete or parent of a senior. How about a junior? Not a lot of kids are even going to get the opportunity to play at the college level. That's number one. Number two is those kids that get scholarship offers in Division One and Division Two. Whatever the sport is, you have to be an elite athlete. Most That's of them will get partial scholarship number offers. Number two. 5,000 or 10,000. Couldn't it be going to leave that there. I'm going to go on here. For those of you somewhere in the Northeast, have probably heard of WFAN. I've been on a variety of things and I'm just gonna play you a little clip of I think my last appearance that was on WFAN. I've been on 13 years straight on the recruiting process and I'm just gonna play a brief clip and I'll tell you why I'm playing this in a minute. To extend their athletic career to the next level. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, there are a lot of colleges to look at, obviously at all different levels, Division One, Two, and Three. There are junior colleges out there, but you have to do your homework with your son or daughter to make sure they find the right place. The problem is that for most athletes and their parents, of course, going through the recruiting process is at times exhilarating, but most of the time, it's extremely confusing. It's baffling. Your, your son or daughter, they're reaching for the next rung on the athletic ladder, and yet there's just really no set pathway or guide or map to get them through the process. It is, is very, very daunting. So each year, in order, to help, in order to help you give you a chance, I like to bring on Wayne Mazzoni, the, the longtime pitching coach at Sacred Heart University in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Wayne also happens to be a national expert when it comes to the college recruiting process. Uh, and every Okay, and I preface showing you those things because I want you to you're going to get basically a minute and a half overview of what recruiting really is right now. And then we're going to get to some real legit insider tips. Okay. So the three steps of recruiting are the following. Step number one is there's over a thousand college baseball programs. You have to start figuring out based on your grades, maybe what you want to study, what part of the country you like, how far from home, the size of the school, the setting, city, suburbs, rural, and then, of course, your baseball talent. Are you high level D1, low level, two, you know, division two, II, division three? You do some soul searching and start to figure out what you like. And you should be able to come up with a list of schools that make a fit for you as a student, as a person, and as a baseball player. That is really step one. And if really until you're able to do that, yeah, I like this school, here's why. I don't like this school, here's why. You're really not really ready to tackle, excuse me, the recruiting process. Number two is after you've identified these 10, 15, 20 schools, you need to understand how to get evaluated by these schools, which was what we'll cover after we get off this screen. So, but the third piece then is once you are being recruited, you have so many things now to deal with between NCAA eligibility, evaluating the different schools, making sure you get admitted, what's the financial aid, academic and athletic going to be, making the final choice, seeing the facilities, um, a million different things, concussion policy, drug testing, what are the circumstances of losing a scholarship. Is Once you're being recruited, you have a whole lot of work. It's great to be recruited, but it can also be overwhelming because you really have to do your homework. Okay, so to this middle part right now, let's, and I should interrupt myself, Along these, these three steps could be difficult. You might go, you know what, man, I pitched yesterday. I pitched fantastic. I, you know, I was, I was throwing 78 to 80. You know, I'm a class of 2022 throwing 78 to 80. I pitched four innings. I gave up one hit. And the guy that came in after me, man, he walked three and he gave up two runs. You know, he was 86, 87. But why are they calling him? I don't get it. Well, right, I think you'd know from that side of the screen, we're going to call people that have more velocity. It doesn't mean we're going to recruit them. It doesn't mean that they're a better pitcher, but we want to start off with some velocity. Yet you think, you know what, I'm getting out. The college coach is going to love me. Not necessarily, right? There's boxes that need to be checked. So here's three insider points of view or tips that you should really be locked in on. 
you need to have a video, especially during coronavirus to get attention, but it must be done in a certain way. Um, it should not, you should not use game footage. I, I get 50 game footage emails a day. It looks like they're filmed from Mars. I can't see a thing. I can't evaluate. It's an absolute waste unless it's broadcast. If it's broadcast, different. Maybe you're at an event, they actually broadcast, you can get clips, different story. Don't do this stupid introduce yourself, I'm Wayne Mazzoni, I'm a class of 2020. No one wants to hear, I don't mean to be a jerk, but no one wants the cheesiness at the beginning. We wanna see you throw a baseball, be really good at it, and then we wanna know about you, right? So I'm tired of watching videos and coaches are tired of watching videos where you're doing this uncomfortable, horrible introduction of yourself at the beginning, okay? Number three, the more graphics you put it in music and fading and all this, this production values, it looks like it came from Hollywood. We don't want it. We'd much rather see a video from your iPhone uploaded of 10 bullpen pitches and get us excited. Don't make the video long. Make us get 10 pitches and want to see more. If we ask you for more video, you should be pumped. Better that than sending a five minute video with fire coming out of the beginning that's filmed of a live game. And it's, 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 so far away it's just a waste so your video must be done in a certain way to get us intrigued okay number two insider tip you need to use your references in a very specific way your references are your coaches an instructor an alum of the school a scout okay i've been unbelievably successful on my side working with younger pitchers being a reference for them to open the door but I've also found a third of, of the guys on my roster by the reverse way. Someone calls me about somebody and now out of this noise of the recruiting process, I go watch this particular kid because I've been told about him. Doesn't mean I'm gonna recruit them, it means I'm gonna evaluate them. So if you're not using your people to help separate you from the crowd, you're gonna be left behind. I don't know why I did through that spinning operation in there, but you need to use your references they need to be listed on an email. They need to make some phone calls for you. They need to open the door, okay? Number three is to get seen live, whether live means on a computer now that's something streamed or live is in person when the world is back to normal. You need to make a connection with the college coach. Remember, all of us in college coaching picked that career over being a high school coach because we wanted to pick who was on the team. So we don't want to just be a high school coach, which is great, by the way, but we don't want to just have a tryout. Hey, these are, these are my guys. We want to shape the team. So we want to recruit kids that we have a connection with, a rapport with. Obviously, they need to be talented. So you should be able to, whether through a letter, through a text, through a phone call, on a visit, say why you like their college, why you like, you know, Marist, why they should like you as a student. Okay. Number two, why you like their baseball program and why we should like you as a pitcher. Number three, links to video, references in a schedule should be in all your communication. And then find that personal connection. Coach, I know you went here. My sister goes there. I visited your school. I saw you play this game. Hey, I know you spoke at this convention. My dad, something. Do some research. Find out a way to make a connection to the coach that's you're not doing it with a thousand coaches, you five or six or seven coaches that are your dream schools. If one of them recruits you, you're done with the process, right? So get very specific about trying to get this connection with a college coach and do some research. Don't just cookie cut it. I can't begin to tell you how many emails I get that don't say Coach Mazzoni. They say the coach at another school. And you know the kid's just cookie cutting emails and just blasting them out because his mom is screaming at him to get the emails out. Like that's the magic answer, not necessarily the case. Here is a list of guys that I've worked with over the last probably three years that I've been able to help go from you know high school age to being able to pitch in college. And a lot of it do, whether it's coaching them or um, becoming a reference in person, remote, whatever the case is. Um, Here's some more guys. I'm just going to play a couple of clips of some guys that I worked with that did land in Division One, which I think is your goal. Coach Mazzoni is somebody who I'm so thankful to have had the opportunity to work with over the past couple of years. I met him at a point in my baseball career where um, I was small, I was skinny, didn't really throw too hard, but um, he saw something in me, encouraged me to stick with it, gave me the confidence I needed to um, ultimately reach my goal of playing D1 baseball. And I owe so much of that to him um, from a baseball philosophy standpoint. 
it's just so obvious being around the guy, whether it's on a lesson, at a showcase, how much he loves the game, always got a smile on his face, believes in a loose, athletic approach to pitching, uh, uses video of guys in uh, the big leagues to uh, help you incorporate that into your pitching mechanics. And um, it's it's just so worth it to work with him. I would drive an hour and a half uh, both ways just to get the opportunity to work with him. And um, it's just one of the best in the business. And here's just a, a clip from his mom after he was able to play and sign for Division One, right? And the part of this that I love, okay, but most of all, we want to say thank you for treating our son like he was one of yours, okay? I have my own kids, two high school boys and that's how I want them to be treated and that's how I treat other people. Here's another guy, uh, Mr. Jacob deGrom lookalike, Cooper Thompson. My name is Cooper Thompson, currently senior in high school and I want to start off by saying I am so thankful for everything Coach Maz has taught me about. Um, first he's taught me mechanics which my mechanics were a mess when I first went to him just like I'm sure everybody else's were but um, he he told me what I was doing wrong and he picked it up so quick and he gave me like so many different ideas, so many things to try. And it's it's really just how you feel. And um, I just remember he gave me so many different drills. I, I did them and when I fixed my mechanics, like I just felt better and you get the results. Like my velocity definitely went up and I just became a better pitcher. And he also taught me a lot about the mental game and to just have confidence in my ability. And you have to believe that you're a good pitcher. And when you're on the mound, you have to know that you're in control and that that batter has to hit this round ball with a round bat and that you have the advantage. And I I can't thank Coach Maz enough because he's just helped me out so much in my baseball career so far. And then here's just a quick um, email from his mom that for years she knew something was off of his mechanics and then I picked it up really quickly. He was doing something, you know, weekly with his front side leg. And he went from about 78 to 84 in about two sessions and then continued to go out from there using a, this medicine ball drill and signed to play D1. OK, so just to, to recap that piece, you need to have the talent. But once you have the talent, you need to bridge that recruiting gap, that confusing recruiting gap. In a, in a proven way. Not every coach on your list will recruit you, but your goal is to get every coach to evaluate you and tell you you don't have the grades or you're not good enough or we don't need righties, you know, 5'11", right? Whatever it is, you want feedback. Getting a no, getting enough no's will get you to a yes, okay? Not everyone gets 15 coaches to, to recruit them. Um, so I just want to recap what we covered here to make sure we're on the same page. Number one, I taught you, you kind of learned what the 5% do that, that put in what boxes they check to get into that 5%. And then number two, what are the things, body, mind, and skill that you're doing or need to do to, to you know, get into that 5%? Not only what, but how do you get in there? And then hopefully just a little bit about insider piece of the recruiting process to give you just a little bit of edge over the rest of the whole world trying to do you know, the exact same thing. Um, you may be at this stage pumped up gain some information, overwhelmed, confused, stressed. I'm not really sure, you know, how are you? Raring to go, raring to quit and give up on it. Um, I hope that you thought it was it was awesome. But what I was certainly trying to do was be efficient in terms of time, right? So I, I don't want to keep everybody here for a few hours. There's only so much you can cover. But I did want to ask, and I'm going to kind of call up the chat. I did want to get into some more detail um, about pretty much a special offer for this webinar about how to help you implement these, this, what I've talked to you, these three things in these boxes in the body, mind, and skill. So I'd like to know if you're interested um, in hearing more about that. I'm kind of asking for your permission. Would anybody like to hear more about how I think I can help you develop really quickly? And someone just wrote, will the PowerPoint be available to us? Yes, I will send uh, a copy out, but okay, good. I appreciate the yeses, so I'm just gonna, shut off my chat and I'm going to go back to, to sharing the, the screen there. Um, so what the offer is here is I'm going to try to basically um, implement and teach you everything that I, that I um, can or show you how you can implement these things outside of just this one, you know, our webinar, the three must do's and then all these, these boxes right here. Okay. So I'm glad that 
people put that in the chat. I do want to warn you. That's why I wrote it in the biggest, reddest thing possible. If you're staying on here, I want pitchers and I want to work with pitchers that are motivated. If you're lazy, it's not for you. This, is, this isn't magic what I'm about to, to show you. It's structured hard work, right? I'm not going to knock on the door at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning to wake you up. Right. If you don't want it at 10 on a 10 scale to pitch in college, if that's not your dream, then you might as well click off and go do something else. But if you're crazy motivated and you're looking for help from a D1 guy, then I advise you to stay on. Because what I've done is I've put everything I've ever learned in my entire life into this roadmap course. OK, it's is this your path to pitch in college. It's gotten ridiculously good feedback and it's basically my life's work. Um, and it also covers everything that you're going to need to get a recruiter to look at you and put on his scorecard and check the boxes off for you, okay? So it's something that I, I want to go through now. So my D1 roadmap has the following, okay? It has um, things to cover your skill development, okay? What is the skill? How to get the five key moves in your delivery to get velocity. How to develop movement, spin, command on your fastball. How to develop a curve, slider, cutter, change, and split. How to develop these. How to find out which are right for you. It's all in this roadmap course. Why? Because I've done it for 28 years, right? How to manage the running game. How to do proper long toss, bullpens, and, and structure your year-long throwing program. So my roadmap, all online, is something you can learn immediately to make yourself um, training like a Division One pitcher. And you'll immediately be, be better on the mound in terms of your skill and develop in your pace to be the highest level pitcher possible. But it also covers other things because you're equally three parts. You need the skill, the way you actually pitch, you need a bot, your body and mind. So in the body, we cover a variety of things. Um, velocity programs for, for pitchers, elite arm care systems, right? This is crucial. When your arm is hurting, um, then you, you're a different pitcher. How to warm up like an elite pitcher. Pardon me, I just clicked something on the screen there. Yeah, strength and conditioning program. How to strength and condition like a pitcher. Mobility and flexibility programs. Do you know how to be flexible, groin, hip, lower back, hamstrings? How to actually do weighted ball and velocity programs at your age and with your resources and what you have. Do you understand how to use massage, stim, ice bath, and bands to become elite? Okay, that's what's covered in there. You'll start checking all the body boxes that you need to win and get college coaches interested in you. Okay, anything that you've thought about, you've looked for somewhere, what's the right strength training program, arm care, it's all in the roadmap. Same thing from a mental standpoint, how to develop the mindset of an elite pitcher. It's a 10 part video system that's in there. How to develop a mantra and train your self talk. Guided meditation programs, how to evaluate outings after each outing. How do you review your outing to know how to prepare for the next one? how to develop the mindset like your favorite big league pick pitcher. So the whole point of this mental development is you'll start again checking the boxes that when I as a college coach or another college coach calls your high school coach or your summer coach and asks what kind of mental makeup that you have, you start checking the boxes of, yeah, this guy competes, he gets after it, he's structured, he doesn't get rattled, he has all the qualities that we're looking for. But then it also has the following. It's got a book, a seminar, a webinar to cover the entire recruiting process for you to figure out how to evaluate your talent, how to contact coaches, select camps, how to select the right teams, how to evaluate college programs and visit campuses. So I've been a, a, an instructor, author, teacher on this. You will have information that other people do not. You need the talent. But if talent is equal, you'll have a leg up on everybody in terms of understanding the ins and outs of the recruiting process. I think this roadmap works because it structures and plans out your development, starts with an assessment and then evaluates you as you go along, helps you build the body, mind and skill, definitely gives you a recruiting plan, allows you to learn a skill. So maybe you're learning, you know, um, the drive off the mound and you have to get that first. And now you're gonna learn the drive before you learn to front side post up. So it allows you to learn one thing and build off it and also work at your own pace and ultimately helps you self coach. That's my goal as a, as a college coach and even working with my younger guys is to get them to start being able to look at their own stuff and start to self coach because ultimately you're on the island alone, you're on the mound alone. You need to start FIOing it on your own. You need to start figuring it out. Okay, so this roadmap basically has all of these um, pieces in there.
from a physical, mental skill standpoint to help you develop, and then of course the recruiting process. Now, it also has a cool, complete bonus thing here. Number one is all the, the live in-person coaching clinics that I've done, and the ones that I've done recently in terms of um, these webinars, lessons learned in my 30 years, had a, a video analysis breakdown of Jacob deGrom, figuring out your changeup, COVID-19 baseball recruiting webinar, what a college coach wants in recruit. And, and this thing is updated, by the way, this roadmap that I'm talking about is constantly updated. So I just updated it yesterday. I did a, a pitching coach round table with three different people, the top velocity guy, the pitching coach at University of Missouri and the Seattle Mariners minor league pitching coordinator. We did a round table online. That's going on there. It's so new I didn't even put it on the screen. You also get the Zoom talks that I've done in the past and the future. Me and Scott Brown from Vandy, we do a whole session. Paul Maneri from LSU, Pete, uh, Fred Corral, pitching coach at Missouri, Matt Blake, Yankees pitching coach, Pete Mackey runs the minor league pitching for the Twins, Bobby Valentine, former manager, Eric Cressy. You're getting content that you want. You can look at it on a phone, an iPad. It's always there. It's not meant to overwhelm you. It's like, hey, I'm on a, I'm on a hotel on a trip with a tournament. I got nothing to do for two hours. It's the summertime. Hey, I'll watch Coach Maz talk with the Vandy coach, okay? And then the other piece in there that I think is really cool is like players trade hats and shirts. You know, when we play other people, I trade pitching manuals. So I have a variety of pitching manuals from various colleges where you see basically how they break down and run their year long thing and development and drills. And it's really cool. You'll obviously see mine. Mine is really the roadmap, but the um, you'll see other college programs as well. This one here is from Washington state. Um, I'm just going to kind of quickly throw in some, some, you know, some texts and different things that I've gotten from people um, just so you could see that, you know, I'm, getting feedback from the roadmap and various things in a, in a very positive way. And this is right here. Is this a kid going to the big leagues? No, this is a kid who got cut as a ninth grader and as a sophomore was the only one that made varsity, right? You'll never hear this kid's name. But that makes me happy. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through on the quicker side. Love my coaching style. Here's one of my remote students. I really enjoyed our session today. It was very helpful and also very fun. Here's a kid that committed to Kenyon, a ridiculously good academic school in Ohio. Um, he told me that you spoke to him about me and you were essential in my recruiting process. So I helped open the door for this kid at that school. Here's another kid who came to my velocity program and worked with me uh, in person is having a, a great year. Um, this is a friend of mine that um, worked with Chad Knight as a hitter, as a hitting coach and basically said, I had to hate to give you a credit, but I've never seen anyone more commanding at any age with three, four pitches like that. I was glad the announcers made the reference that he is not a six foot who is just bigger. It's talent. The slider is fifth, filthy, by the way, and made a lefty fall. Um, and this is from uh, the kid Chad Knight's parents. So this roadmap, you could go right on line right now and it would sell and it is selling for 9.95. Okay, so access as a course, you log in, here's a screenshot on the right of the different videos and things that just kind of a one stop uh, screenshot. Um, it's not, you know, you're not gonna find this anywhere else. It's not in YouTube, it's not in a book. It's just trial and error learning from 30 years as a D1 pitching coach, okay? Um, but also for being on this webinar and, and dedicating your time to it, I have a little bit of an offer and a special, okay? Then I'm gonna give you this roadmap mind you, my life's work, which sells for $1,000. I'm going to give it to you for free by being on this webinar and upgrade and supercharge your results if and when you join my one-on-one -on -one remote coaching program. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. So the roadmap along with the one-on-one -on -one coaching is a way to do the following. It's a roadmap built for you. So you get access not only to this roadmap of this guided structured program, but then you also get to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, a college pitching coach, okay, to help you develop in all areas. And I'm going to give you a little overview now of what that actually would look like as best as I can from, you know, on a webinar. When you join the one-on-one the -on -one coaching, it starts with a Zoom meeting. So it's a way I on-ramp you. We review some video. We set a plan. I give you access to the roadmaps so you can start logging that in. But it's you. And alone is the pitcher or mom and dad or just mom or just dad or whatever the case is. But we kick it off with a Zoom call. Number two is we do an assessment. 
I have a seven page assessment that you fill out, upload, and it helps me get to learn your history and what you do well and what you need to work on. And then we set up this Coach Now remote coaching space. Coach Now is freaking genius. Um, and I wish I thought of it because it allows this. It is a phone or tablet. I actually can access it on the computer too, but it's, most kids that I work with will use it on their phone. And it's a private space between me, the coach, you, the pitcher, your parents, any coaches that you want in there. So it's just us that are in it. It allows us to put video, audio, notes, upload an article, a PDF, so it can put in all different information. One person posts it, I post it, everyone else sees it. Your mom posts it, everyone else sees it. She shoots a video, everyone else sees it. It's really, really convenient. And it's a running history of my coaching with you. So, and I'm gonna show you a clip of it a little bit, but everything that we ever do is in this app. And so I have guys that I've worked with for years. I, we laugh sometimes, I'll call up a video and say, dude, look what you looked like three years ago. Not only your body, but look at your delivery, right? Um, it allows for constant feedback, meaning 24 seven. When I click off this webinar, first thing I'll do is click on my coach now app and see what my current guys have done and updated and comment on them. You could take with it anywhere. Obviously it's mobile. It becomes your baseball journal. Okay. I'm huge into journal stuff, right? Or at least just taking notes, remembering things. I mean, you go to class and you take notes, but yet you learn baseball and you don't take notes about what you thought on your slider or your grips or something. So it looks like this. Here's my screenshot. There's my Coach Now app. Um, here's kind of a look, just a screenshot of some information in there. This is the button you click where it lets you take video, a photo, go to your uploaded photos or videos, put in a note, an audio, or a document. Okay. Um, here's another screenshot of the actual inside of, of what it looks like. And I'm going to get more detailed with the video, but just to try to explain what coach now is in case you don't get it. And I should also say it's killer for parents because some parents want to see everything that's going on. And all they have to do from a, from a bird's eye view, go look, Oh, coach did this. And my son's working this. You, you can see the information. You could be involved if you want, or you can not be involved if you want, but you're still supervising what's going on, okay? And that's what really makes it powerful. So here's a video the kids sent me. I then take that video and I do a video analysis on it and I reload it back into the app, okay? Um, here's one I got today from one of my guys. Coach, this makes so much sense to me, thank you. The reason I, I was thinking was because I was trying to get power when really by doing it, I'm losing power. I'll work on that leaning and, and stressing, as you said, moving forward and not just down. So he sent me a video. I critiqued it, sent it back, and boom, this makes sense to me. That's the idea. It's not a one hour a week. It's an ongoing thing, okay? So the coaching is meant to be specific, my leading your development, covering all of these things, not always at once. It might be a delivery thing in the beginning, or maybe your delivery is good, but you need to develop pitch, a pitch or command, or you need to develop your body or your mindset, or you just need recruiting advice or two or three things at once, but I'm not overwhelming you. I'm giving you just enough information for you to get something down and then move on, but it's specific to you. Okay. So here's just two quick videos of a little bit of what it would look like. So here's, here's a, just a bit of a clip of a Zoom talk, an on-ramping Zoom talk. Okay, so bottom line is it's a lower half operation. The upper body's getting into position, and then as soon as the right foot hits the ground, it starts firing the hips and the core and the lower back, and it brings the arm through, okay? And what I was saying to you is you're an elite lower half mover, elite, okay? I watch a lot of these videos, and you have basically a perfect drive, and you have a great stride length, and you firm up on the front side beautifully. So you've got, you have nice flexibility, you have good lower half strength, you're just misfiring the, the biomechanical sequence by firing the arm too soon, okay? Now, what I was gonna ask you, and I think this is right when we got cut out, is if you're in a game and you're throwing a pitch, Mason, what are you thinking about? All right, so I'll leave that there. Here's the next clip. This is a, a, a screenshot recording of what it looks like for coach now. Okay, this is uh, a look inside the Coach Now platform. Uh, the, for the majority, this is a mobile 
you know, phone, iPhone, tablet platform. Uh, you can also use it on a laptop or a desktop. Now I'm recording on my desktop. So just to give an example of how it really works from the inside, um, I would have multiple spaces, of course, because I'm coaching many players. You would have your own particular space. So I'm just going to open up uh, the look inside of one portal, Liam Rose, lefty from Pennsylvania. And when you get to um, – Inside, you'll see the most recent activity first, and as you scroll down, it goes to the oldest. So I have some players I've worked with for years. They have years' worth of information. So um, what it allows us to do is it allows any of us that are in the system, parents, me, you, the, the pitcher, coaches, any coach that you want in there, to upload anything, a document, an audio, a video, a note, and we all get to see it. But the majority of the way the coaching works is back and forth via video drills or bullpen sessions or even game that the player would upload and then I would critique. So here's just an example of that video he sent. Hey, Liam. Hope all is well. Hope you had a good practice today. And since I wasn't sure if we were going to Zoom tonight and uh, I'm going to get started with dinner, I figured I would just record this video, see if he can make that correction on his own. So let's go over the way down over the rubber before you ever move forward so, so that's a look inside it to critique the player can upload that video at any time when i uh, get access to it then i would do my own comments and be able to send it back and it just goes back and forth with video um, i might post drills um, this is a drill from another uh, another player i work with but that i wanted liam to be able to do here's another critique back and forth so it's motivational stuff is back and forth basically communication um through this app ultimately the player would send it in mostly directly through their phone which is why it is really a great and convenient okay, so hopefully that gives you a little more insight of what that is here's a, just some feedback from some various people that i've worked together uh work with in this capacity often the parents um you can see at the bottom thank you for everything Another player whose fastball has jumped completely after starting, you know, in the low 70s. Um, here's, he's loving the remote training and, and very motivated and I think is improving weekly. He responds well to all the stuff you give him, the yoga, the interviews, the baseball thoughts, the form versus the player, the visual form breakdown side by side. Um, here's the kid, Liam Rose, hit 84 today with pitch logic. Um, so this program works for a pitcher in that 12 to 18 range looking for a full-time pitching coach, um, may even have a local pitching coach, but wants either more advanced help or more uh, help throughout the course of the week or month, as opposed to just during a lesson, and is motivated to take advantage of, of the, the college, you know, working with a college coach. What I want, somebody who loves the game, okay? So I'm in coaching for people that love it. If you don't love it, forget it, right? I've, when I have a player show up at practice, that's just not in the right frame of mind and they're in a bad boat, we just send them home, right? You need to have that work ethic, that fun ethic. You just need structure or you need elite coaching. You need more access to the coach. You want to become your own best coach, right? And you want to play at the highest level possible. Those are the kind of guys that I want. Um, and if you're on your side thinking, well, I already you know, have a pitching coach. Well, I guess the question is, do you have access to your coach 24 seven? right? The remote coaching allows you to upload a video at 10 o'clock at night. I wake up at six in the morning. I critique it, send it back. You wake up, you have something to work on. You work on a drill at 11, you send it to me. I comment at 12 and send it back. So is your coach an actual recruiter? Is your coach been coaching, you know, college pitchers and recruiting college pitchers for 25 years? Um, do you want to be coached like a, a division one pitcher? Um, I often get asked, what do you need on your end to work with me in a remote capacity. Nothing, everything you got. If you have the world's best gym in your house and every single possible ball in the world, great, we'll use it. You got nothing, fine, we'll use it. I need your motivation. I don't need you to have all kinds of, you know, uh, belts and bands and all kinds of things. We can make it work with whatever works, certainly quarantine friendly, certainly you could do it in a hotel. I, I can, I've coached pitching for a long enough time to know how to find everyone's way that they need to develop. To talk money for a minute, my current lesson rate is $150 for an hour lesson. My video analysis um, is $95. And if I'm dealing with someone that needs help from a recruiting perspective, I charge $200 for a recruiting consultation. So if you're an average pitcher and you're taking a lesson a week and you're getting a video analysis, 
you're spending six, seven hundred dollars a month on pitching development. If you're adding a recruiting piece in it, your average person is going to spend almost nine hundred dollars. Some people come in for twice a week lessons, right? And just the, the numbers start to go up to over a thousand dollars a month. I certainly see plenty of kids, whether they're working with me or other people, are spending that much money through pitching lessons. What you don't get with in-person lessons is feedback between sessions, all the time access, the conversations recorded and uploaded forever, the ability for other people to tune in, your high school coach, your other coach to look in and go, wow, this is what they're working on. Okay, I get it. I'll, I'll you know, encourage that as well. Your parents to understand what's going on and to check in how they're doing constantly, right? So um, what you would get with the remote coaching, unlimited coaching, unlimited video analysis, command drills, recruiting plan, customized roadmap experience, if you would add everything up individually, it's going to be pricey. It's going to be over $3,000 a month. Um, but if all it did was on your side, finally not let you know you're developing the right way, help, help you structure your training, and give you the best chance to pitch in college, would it be worth it? Would it be worth it to spend that to make a dream come true? I think it would, okay? But I know what you've invested already. I know the gear. This sport has a lot of gear, man. A lot of stuff, right? You've spent money on lessons. You've spent money on teams, right? It's no longer just legion or go play pickup ball. It's expensive, right? It's a business now. You have tournaments. You have camps. You have showcases. I have an extra S in showcase. That's frustrating me. Um, you have registrations and hotels and planes. You've invested a lot of time and blood and sweat and tears and not going out with the guys Friday night because you got to get up early for here or other things that you've given up. And if you pitch well and you play in college, all the money and the effort is worth it. But what if you're the typical ninth through 12th grade kid that plays four years, spends 20 grand on baseball and doesn't play in college. If the goal is playing college and you spent that much, it's a no brainer. But if you spent $20,000, the goal was to play in college, but you don't, I think we would call that a lost investment. So I ask you, what would it be worth if I'm the added piece that helps you get to play in college? What is it worth to play in college? What is it worth to use baseball to get into a better college? What is it worth to get scholarship money in college? Um, I know I've always underpriced things because I'm nice. Right. If you don't know me, you might not think I'm nice, but I'm nice. I, you know, so here's some feedback just with somebody that I wanted to share. Coach, I wanted to thank you for all you've done in the last eight months. Jake, has really come a long way. Your approach, knowledge, mentorship, and guidance have helped him give him a foundation needed for real success as a pitcher. I think it's just the beginning. I wanted to say how thankful I personally am. I love getting that. My problem is back to this, all this stuff of what people are spending. They've, They've, I've seen thousands of people, you're me, you're 51 years old, you've seen thousands of people put in all the money, all the time, everything, didn't get better, didn't reach the potential, didn't get recruited, didn't play D1, didn't play any level of college. Would you get a little crazy frustrated? Right? That's the definition of insanity, watching the same thing over and over again without a different result. And this thing I'm about to show you is satisfying, but drives me crazy. Want to thank you for your time this evening. Chris has taken pitching lessons with three different coaches over the years, and we learned more in 30 minutes with you than we did in over eight years. That's great. Makes me feel good. Wow, I've brought, I really taught somebody something. What in the world is the world doing spending money on lessons doing all this? If I taught you more in 30 minutes than you did over eight years, it bothers me. Okay. Now, if you join this remote coaching or get involved with me, I will also save you money and time. Here's why. You will save money on lessons that don't help you. You will save money on these things you look up that look cool and shiny on Instagram that you buy for 400 bucks that don't do anything. On camps that are a waste, you need to tell me what camps you're going to and I'll tell them if they're worth your while. Recruiting services, there's basically all but one that are that just stink. Just give money to a downtrodden guy on the corner with a sign that's struggling instead of spending money on a recruiting service. I think if you you invest with me, you'll realize that'll save you money in the long run. So I think working with me is, is a good deal if it was at almost four grand. Even at $1,500 a month, it's kind of like a, a, a good deal. It's a steal to get your son a chance to play in college or you a chance to play in college. But I'd like to do something special for you during the webinar, okay? You're going to get the roadmap Okay, at 995, you could see the value, the college baseball recruiting collection, the webinar, the Zoom talks, the pitching manuals, lifetime of update, 
that's worth about 2,500. All the stuff that's in the roadmap for free. So nothing, the roadmap won't cost you anything. The unlimited coaching, remote coaching would add up to all these things here that you would get me coaching you would be the equivalent of about four grand a month. This I got today at 621 tonight. I screenshot it off my phone and send the, I was just pumped to get it. Coach Wayne, left hand pitcher John Kiss was 86 today at New York State Games, PBR, with a filthy three pitch mix. Want to thank you for helping him with a med ball drill that he said really helped him get in his legs. Okay, so it's not $3,700 a month, it's not $1,500 a month. My one on one coaching is $300 a month with a six month commitment. So you would get the roadmap, all my content, and then work with me individually for $300 a month with a six month commitment. Now, why a six month commitment? I'm weeding out the, the halfway in guys, right? If you're like, eh, I kind of want to do it, maybe want to play in college, I don't want you, right? The six month commitment is meant to be there for someone that seriously knows that they're dying to play in college, that this is a dream come true, that you are in, that you are in with me, okay? So this is a link here that I don't think you could click from your side, I will put in the chat, and this is what you would click on to get started to, to start to work with me. But I we have a little more to, to cover. You have two choices, I think, by listening what you, you've done so far. And the first option, don't do anything. Keep doing what you're doing. Second option, join and give yourself the best possible chance to play Division I baseball by working with me. Um, I guess the real question, and this is for athletes, but also you know, to parents, do you think you or your son has a better chance of playing in college working directly with a Division I pitching coach and recruiter or not? Right? I think that comes down to the key question. Do you think a guy with my experience can really be the key person to help? Um, some questions that I normally get, and I will entertain your questions after, but this is what I normally get, so I'm going to answer them before we get there. Can I stay on after the six months? Yes, free country. We just go monthly after that, and you just decide what you want. What if I'm in season? I can work with you in season. I can work with you during the tournament. I can work with you out of season, in the winter, if you're in Mexico, if you're on the moon, it doesn't matter, right? Do I replace your current pitching coach, your current guy that you've been seeing? I can, don't have to. Maybe what we do together supplements that or helps your coach see things in a different way and upgrades his ability. Maybe you like the person, maybe that's where your team goes, fine. Can we text, email, talk on the phone as well, Zoom, all that stuff, sure. We're not gonna be meeting six hours a week, but you need me for something. Something happened with a coach, you know, recruiting, you need to talk or text, absolutely. I do it all the time. I've got texts on my phone, which is right here. How do I differ from other remote coaching programs? Very simple one way. It's not a cookie cutter login, and this is what you do. It's, your, it's specifically to you. You will get a different program than another kid because you're at a different stage, you're a different person. Are your parents involved? We talk about it. We talked about that already. They can be as much as they want. They can also get out of your hair and just see what you're doing. Can we meet in person for a one-on-one -on -one camp or clinic? Absolutely. I have a lesson tomorrow with a kid that we've started on the remote. He lives close enough to be able to drive here. Or I've had people come to camps and clinics. It's fine. Okay. It's, that doesn't separate your ability to come see me in person and supplement the remote coaching. So I just want to recap. This is all the stuff you're getting. There's a lot of stuff. It's my lifetime's worth of work. I just want to repeat that, not making you feel sorry for me, but I've been coaching 28 years. And the 28 years of knowledge that I have is in this, the roadmap and is in my remote coaching and any kind of coaching. So you're basically getting what I would consider $6,000 worth of information if you were to buy it separately individually for only $300 a month. Um, I'm encouraging you to do it now, for a couple of reasons. The roadmap offer is only for people that are on the webinar, number one. Number two is I limit who I work with. I don't want a thousand people to sign up. I couldn't handle a thousand people. That's not the way it works. I have a set number of people I like to be with. Maybe those kids go off to college and they go and then I get new people in, okay? So that's certainly the way that I want it to be. So restrictions apply. I'm gonna play a quick clip because some of you are online and you probably follow what Josh Heenan is from ATP. I'd like to just play you a clip of uh, Josh Heenan here. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Josh Heenan, President of Advanced Therapy and Performance and Doctor of Integrated Medicine and Strain Conditioning Coach. 
I've been working with Wayne Mazzoni for the past 10 years, where we've shared countless athletes both in person and online. He's an incredible judge of talent and projectability. He's one of our largest resources when we're trying to figure out where a guy can play at the next level. Uh, he understands how to get the most out of his athletes without completely overhauling their mechanics. So he finds the easiest tweak and he's able to get those athletes to throw harder, quicker than most of our counterparts. You should definitely check out some more of Wayne's work as he's definitely one of the guys that I always go to when I have uncertainties with our pitching motion and our recruiting process. So I, I, I always laugh when I play that clip because Josh Heenan has got like 200,000 followers across all these social media platforms. He's a really good strength and conditioning coach, um, but I cut him when he tried out for me in college. So we, we laugh at that all the time, but he's a really good guy with the body. Um, yeah, you don't want to hear him again. Um, I'm making one offer on this webinar for tonight is if you join me and you know sign up for the remote coaching by tonight, I will agree to reach out to one school on your behalf in the recruiting process, okay? Now, that comes with a little bit of fine print. The fine print is we got to agree that you are a fit at this school. So if you have a particular school that's your dream place, I will call and open up the door for you after I get to know you a little bit and I, after I believe that you can play there. So if I think, you know, you're a Division three player and you want me to call up USC and UCLA, I'm going to say, no, sorry. And you're going to say, well, you offered me this ticket on this webinar. I'm going to say, I don't care, right? Because that's just not the way it works. I'm good at what I do with getting people attention because the coach knows if I'm calling, it's the right fit for them. But I'm offering that to you, those of you that are still with me on the webinar. And it looks like we haven't lost anyone, which is, is nice. Um, so to get started, you would simply go to this remote coaching order page right here. I'm going to cut and paste it in a minute, see if I can do it right now. No, I can't. I'll figure out a way to get that in there. Um, but I want to explain this. If you go ahead and do that, this is if you sign up for the coaching, this is what will happen after you sign up. I'll contact you to get video, send you the assessment form, schedule our kickoff Zoom meeting, give you access to log in and get the roadmap, okay? And you're going to get content as it goes. You don't get everything at once. You'll be overwhelmed. You get to get content as you go. Okay. And then I would set up your coach now space so that we get access and we start getting up to speed. And what do we do? We get after it. We get better. We get going. Okay. We don't mess around. We start getting going. You could start being a better pitcher by this weekend. Okay. Because sometimes it's just quick tweaks that can really help you get better from there. So this is uh, the final slide. Um, I'm going to try to figure out my way. Hopefully I can do it right here where I can cut and paste this link. Uh, can I do it? Let me see that right here. Oh yeah, baby. I just cut and paste that. So I'm going to cut and paste and put that into the chat. And so you can have it now. What I would like that's for you to access is there, I would be happy right now to answer any question whatsoever that anyone has about any part of the presentation, recruiting, college baseball, pitching, anything. So I'm, I'm encouraging questions. Feel free to put them in the chat. There's no other way. You can't video. You can't speak. I have to see it in the chat. So I'd be happy if you want to answer, oh, excuse me, ask any question and put it into the, to the chat. If no one has any questions, we certainly could sign off, but I'm going to, I'd be, this is one of my favorite things to do is talk pitching. I hope you can tell that I'm kind of into the subject, right? And I want to make you better. So does anyone have any questions about the program, college baseball, recruiting, anything? I'm going to stick around until I get some questions, but. Uh, I'm seeing things happen on the screen, but I can't see if there's any questions. So. I don't know if you guys all see the writing that you see, but interesting, the screen's moving a little bit. I don't see any questions yet. I'll give you a little bit longer. Hope you enjoyed it, by the way. Hope you got something out of being on it on your, uh, um, is the presentation recorded? Yes. So yes, it's recorded. All of you that signed up for it, we will send out the recording to that group. We're not gonna send it to anybody else that 
Um, but it's just for those of you that signed up. Are we having any camps this summer? Great question. Because of the dead period, we are not allowed. So no division one coach can go anywhere to recruit. We can't have people to campus or any camps or anything along those lines. So my recruiting is amounted to watching video, talking to coaches. Um, and so here's a perfect example. If you're still with me, I'm gonna share my screen. And so here's kind of how this works, right? So I get emails from certain people, right? And hopefully you can still see my screen. Um, here is a coach recommending two guys. That's one way. Video is another way. And then certain events are streamed online that I'll watch. But the majority of the way I'm recruiting guys is to is because of guys that I know about through word of mouth. Question, good question here. To, thank you for asking that. What do I think of reclassifying? Ooh, hot topic around the Mazzoni household. Uh, I'm highly against reclassifying. I'll, I'll tell you when I like it and when I don't like it. Um, if your son or you as the player really doesn't like your high school, not loving the kids, the team, the place, and you just think it could be better elsewhere, it makes sense. If you go, man, I love my high school, my friends in this whole situation, it's going to stink to leave. I think it's a horrible decision because I think if you, we don't have data, right? For, from the coronavirus, we're getting a lot of data. We're starting to learn how to interpret data and what it means. We don't have data from reclassifying. My gut tells me from just being on the street, you know, that 80% of the kids that reclassify would not do it again. It's not like it's automatically leading to the promised land of getting them recruited. What I would suggest personally, and this is what I plan to do with my own son, is instead of reclassifying, if he's getting interest but needs extra time, I would just do a post-grad year. So I would go to a post-grad year after high school for one year, and that would bide time to get into college. But to automatically uproot, leave, just for the purposes of a sport, you know, when it works, it seems like a good decision. But I can list a bunch of people that have told me, why the heck did we do that? I regret it. I would never have done it again. It didn't lead to what I thought it was going to lead to. So, Robert, to your question, that's my answer. Other questions? Anybody else? It's an odd way to take questions when you just have to watch the screen for the questions to come in. Um, I know that if we were in person, I'd probably get a lot of questions, but feel free to type them in if you'd like. I do want to show this, actually, and I'll do this while I'm waiting for questions. Um, I just want to kind of show something about what I was talking about the video. Um, so here's a video, you know, I get, again, a gazillion emails, right? Here's a video of a, an email from a kid. Then uh, I click on place to look at the video. Oop. And here's the video right here. And you, hopefully you see my screen still. Tell me from this video, can you evaluate this picture? Right, let's reshow that clip. How in the right mind could anyone evaluate anybody from that, that picture, right? So the majority of videos I see of game footage are really, really difficult to see. Do you think the COVID year has made it more difficult for students who want to play in college, especially with college seniors allowed to play another year? Um, okay, good question. So keep this in mind. The majority of kids in college that were seniors are not returning, okay? There are incentives by the NCAA for them to return. They don't count against the roster limits. Their scholarships, if they were getting them uh, or getting them, don't count towards the scholarship limit. But the majority of colleges aren't re-adding the money. Colleges are hurting at the moment. So they're not going to say, all right, we have all these kids coming back. We're just going to comp them. We didn't account for them having to pay from another year. So the institution itself would have to say, okay, this person got $25,000. They were going to leave, but now they're coming back. Let's give them another $25,000. So most of the college kids that could come back are not. So there's a lot more roster room than people think. The issue can be, 
this is more of the question that we need to be thinking is all the kids that were on the team this year. So for example, a kid that was a freshman in 2020 on a college roster has not used a year. That kid could be around another four years. And the fact that he's got time to plan, he's probably more likely to be around for four additional years, five total, than the kid who was on his way, got a job, and is going to come back, even though his degree is done, to get a master's that he's going to have to pay for to play baseball for another year when he's not going to go pro. So the amount of seniors returning on most college campuses are low. It goes school by school, but the majority of that I know from my school and other schools, it's very low. The issue you do have is that people will be staying for extra time. It doesn't mean automatically they have that option, assuming the coach wants them. So going forward, yeah, you're going to have some issues. The fact of the matter is we still need to recruit players. I'm still recruiting 21s. I'm recruiting 22s. I'm writing notes on 23s. We're still recruiting. Nothing's changed, right? The change is that we can't get on the field and look at the kid live or bring the kid to campus that we like. That's what's ultimately changed. But the process still is we still need to fill kids every single year. So in some ways, recruiting has changed. But in my mind, it really has not changed. But Corinne, thank you for that question. Close that. Close that. Any other questions at all from anybody? You guys are asking good questions and I know that you care and I know that it's a tough process. What do you recommend are the best events to get noticed? Meaning showcases, camps, tournaments, et cetera. Um, is your question summer 2020, Robert? You're saying the best way to get uh, noticed. Um, I would answer that a little differently now than I would answer it um, if it was not coronavirus. But let, let's also step back with a couple of things. You know, my son, who's a class of 2022, has a tournament this weekend in New Jersey. It's not for recruiting. No coaches are going to watch him. It's not broadcast. He don't give a crap. He wants to play ball. He wants to get on the field, beat the other team, right? Yeah, at some point you get older and start you start to want to make sure people are seeing you and they and they know about you. But let's still remember it's a sport we want to play and we want to beat people. Um, in terms of the recruiting process, the best probable events, I mean, here it's on the screen right now is PBR. If I'm still sharing my screen, which I think I am. Um, PBR does a nice job of broadcasting or streaming their events. So I've actually got an account where I can look in, watch events live and see kids and actually see metrics, see velocities, exit velocity, spin. So, so far PBR is leading the charge that I've seen in terms of being able to watch a player, but actually see some metrics. If you watch a kid online pitch, I don't know if he's throwing 75, 85, 95, it's really kind of hard to tell with the video, but if you can now see them with a camera and then see some of the metrics at the same time, that's good. But again, how am I really heavily recruiting? Mostly word of mouth. I'm using my network, I'm calling, I'm asking, I've got my contacts and I'm asking those, those people. So you need some bit, the best thing for, in terms of event, recruiting, get some video, get some people to call for you, go to an event or two that's gonna be streamed. Um, PBR is the one that's doing it the best that I could say right now. Question, when you finally get to see recruits live, will there be a mad rush by coaches to sign kids or will kids have the opportunity to evaluate schools that they have not been able to see all spring and summer? Excuse me, good question. First of all, you can actually go see college campuses. If there's a school that's of interest, you can pop in there anytime. I've done two things I've never done before. I've gone to campus, walked around with my phone and done a FaceTime tour for a kid farther away. And then I've had kids go to campus on their own, walk around with their thing, FaceTime, and I'm telling them what's on campus. You can visit schools, you know, right? Some schools are closed. Many will just let you pop in there and look around. You're just not gonna meet the coaching staff. Um, and I don't think the live, once recruiting is back live, I don't think anything changes. Meaning we're gonna recruit and go for a kid that's a, that's a 2021 in July and August. And it's not like, oh, we're gonna hold off on this kid. September is back to regular recruiting. And now we just go mad, rush and start signing everyone that we could see live for a variety of reasons. The big reason is that when fall comes in September, if they've lifted the dead period, 
and kids are playing fall baseball. College coaches now have given up a season in the spring. Most of their players that would have played summer ball had that opportunity taken away. It's going to be a very intense coaching on the field as a college coach in the fall. It's not like you're going to say, hey, we got caught off in March. Guys, welcome back to campus. By the way, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to look at some kid play. So this flux of people out looking at recruits all fall and that magically is going to start things happening in the fall is very unlikely to be the case. Um, so I don't think there's, and, and I want to, you asked the question another way, there are kids, there's definitely kids being hurt by this coronavirus, just fact, right? That if the sides could come together better, more kids would have opportunities, but it's hurting other kids in the way that they're just not good enough to play in college but they think the reason they're not getting recruited is coronavirus and dead period. They're just not good enough. They're going, when this is lifted, I'll get recruited, but they're not good enough. So the number one thing that always makes recruiting be easier is be better. Throw harder, have good pitches, have a good body, have a good mental game, um, deal with the running game, change speeds, work in and out, actually pitch, actually be really, really, really good at pitching. Um, what is the latest you will begin? What is the latest you will begin the recruiting process on a high school pitcher? Good question. Now you guys, it took you a little while to get the questions. Now you got them pretty good. Um, boy, that's a, such a good question. And you did ask it the right way when you said a high school pitcher, because sometimes the transfer kids can be a little bit later. Um, I would say on a normal year, by the Summer before senior year, we'd be done. Would this year go a little longer? Possibly, but I'd like to still think by September 1, my class of 2021 is filled. Something could change maybe, Robert, on that question where maybe we're back to campus and it's middle of September and we're practicing and all of a sudden I realize, man, I don't have the pitching I thought I had or two guys quit or, and now I go, hey, there's a kid out there that I'll still take. But from my perspective, for a variety of reasons, I'd like to be done with my guys by, by September 1. And I can't speak for everyone on that because, you know, this process has put people in different position with their rosters. But that's, you're asking me, I want to be done by September 1. Anything else, anyone? Certainly happy to answer the question. All right, well, I think we can leave it there. Um, if anyone does have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to me privately. I think everybody at this point probably has my email and knows how to get in touch with me. Obviously, you have the website. You have a, a variety of different ways to get in touch with me. So if you do have questions and you certainly want me to answer anything privately and you don't feel like posting it to all the, to the you know, group here, I'm happy to, uh, to answer that. So I appreciate your time, everybody. Hope you got some knowledge out of that that you enjoyed and was worth your time on a, on a kind of rainy, ugly Tuesday night, at least here in Connecticut. And I hope I can help you reach your goals down the road. Thanks again for your time. Take care, everybody.